All right, so we are going to sketch the graph of the following equations, then write the function in its piecewise form. So I'm going to start by graphing what y is equal to negative 4x plus 4 would look like. So it's got a y-intercept of 4. It's got a slope of negative 4. And I can graph this out, and it's going to look like this. So there's my original function. My new function is going to, for the absolute value, hit that point of zero, and it's going to reflect back up. And it's going to look like that. And I can use the points for my first function to figure out what the points for my new function are going to be. Then I'm going to state what it is in piecewise function. Well, y is equal to the absolute value of negative 4x plus 4. And it looks like negative 4x plus 4 if, well, in this case we can see that it looks the same when it is less than the intercept. So if I have this intercept of 1 and 0, then I'm going to say x is less than or equal to 1. It's going to look like the negative version of that, negative of negative 4x plus 4 if x is greater than 1. For example 2, then I have y is equal to 5 minus 2x, which means that I'm actually taking the original form y is equal to negative 2x plus 5 to put into my slope intercept form. So I have a y-intercept at 5. And for this one, I have a slope of negative 2. And when I'm doing my absolute value form, once it hits that intercept, it's going to bounce back and then work its way back up. Now, in this case, it's easy enough to figure out what that intercept is, but if I needed to verify the intercept, then I would just state, well, if 0 is equal to 5 minus 2x, then 2x would equal 5, or x would equal 5 over 2. So then I can use that to state my piecewise function. I'm going to say that y is equal to the absolute value of 5 minus 2x, where it's going to look like the original version, 5 minus 2x, if x is less than or equal to 5 over 2, or it's going to look like negative of 5 minus 2x, if x is greater than 5 over 2. For example 3, we're going to use the transformations to figure out if I am adding in other transformations outside of the absolute value, what is actually going to occur. So, first thing I would do is I would sketch the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x. Then, I have an a value here of 1 over 2, which means that I'm going to have a vertical stretch. 
by a factor of 1 over 2. And then I have a p-value of 4 and a q-value of 2, which means that I'm going to go 4 to the right and 2 units up. What's that going to look like? Well, I'm going to pick some points that I'm going to start with. So the points that I'm going to start with are going to be negative 4 and 4, negative 2 and 2, 0, 0, 2 and 2, 4 and 4. And these are all points that exist on my y is equal to the absolute value of x graph. Then I'm going to do a vertical stretch of 1 half, which means that that's what's happening to my y value. So for the next part, I'm going to state that I have negative 4, and I'm going to multiply y by 1 half, and I'm going to get 2, or negative 2 and 1, 0 and 0, 2 and 1, and 4 and 2. Then I'm going to move it 4 to the right. So remember, just like with our quadratics, if it's x minus 4, it's actually going to wind up moving 4 units to the right. So the p-value is actually going to be positive 4. And I'm going to say that when I add 4 to all these, I'm going to wind up with 0 and 2, 2 and 1, 4 and 0, 6 and 1, and 8 and 2. And then for the last part, I'm going to add 2 to my y values. 0 and 4, 2 and 3, 4 and 2, 6 and 3, 8 and 4. What would that look like in terms of mapping notation? Well, the original one would be x and multiply all the y's by 1 over 2. Then, for the next part, I added 4 to every x value with still 1 over 2 y's. And the last part, I had x plus 4. I multiplied y by 1 half. And then I added 2 to every y value. What are the coordinates of the vertex? Well, the vertex is going to be at that p and q part, which is going to be at 4 and 2. What is the slope of each line segment? Well, before I do this, I'm going to graph out these points that I have just to verify that from what I see here and I'm going to start at that point of 0 and 4, 2 and 3, 4 and 2, 6 and 3, and 8 and 4. I know that's my vertex and I'm going to stretch it out And I can see that my vertex, or sorry, my slope for one part is, for each part I'm going down one and right two. So it has a slope of negative one over two. And in the positive range, I'm going up one and right two. So it has a slope of positive one over two. So what is the slope of each line segment? Well, For when x is greater than or equal to 4, or the vertex, my slope is positive 1 over 2. For when it is less than x at the vertex, my slope is negative 1 over 2. What is the domain and the range of this function? Well, my domain is going to be x where x e r and my range is going to be 
y, where y has to be greater than or equal to 2 in this case, and y, e, r. If I'm doing the piecewise function, then I'm going to state that y is equal to 1 over 2 and the absolute value of x, sorry, not plus 4, minus 4, plus 2. Now we know that the only thing that changes is the absolute value. So the only thing that's going to flip is my absolute value here. So how can I represent that? Well, I'm going to say that this is going to be equal to the original version, 1 over 2, and then instead of the absolute value, I'm just going to put in brackets. Bracket, x minus 4 plus 2. If x is greater than or equal to 4. When I flip that, or flip the brackets for my second case, I'm just going to say, well, it would be negative x minus 4 times 1 over 2, or I can just move the negative to the outside, negative 1 over 2, x minus 4 plus 2, if x is less than 4.